People deluded, I'm back again. I've got Uncle Lee. You lot have been crying for me to get him on the platform. I had to get Unks. It's a shame after losing to Bournemouth that I ha that we'll have to speak about it. Why are you doing, my guy, man? I'm good, thank you very much, mate. You that guy? I'm good, man. I'm good, I'm good, I'm good. Arsenal lost, but, you know, football's the only thing we can cry about in life, then that's it, man. But, Lee, I've, I've seen, obviously, I've known you for a number of years. I've been watching your content over the over the years, so I'm appreciative to, you know, obviously have your time and to pick your brains. The first thing I want to ask you, do Arsenal have a discipline problem? Because it's another game, another red card. Boy, that's a good question. I don't think it's a discipline problem as far as, far as like, you know, being what's the word, over-aggressive or nasty or anything like that. I just think it's um, naivety, a little bit of um, that really more than anything else. I don't think like um, just silly little uh, impetulance, I, I suppose. I, I, I don't know. You can't call like um, that we're going into games deliberately trying to hurt players and things like that. It's, it's, it's not that sort of... Um, disciplinary record like it's not like we're having a go at referees and arguing and things like that. it's just silly little things that you know I look back on a lot of the things that's that's happened I see other teams doing them and and not not getting pulled up from even like yet yeah, yeah, like the sending off at least the sending off you can't argue that I, I think it is and then the next day you see the Liverpool Chelsea game and you're thinking yeah. well is that is that really like is, is it the same thing um, so you have to look at it and go, do you know what? We've just got to be a little bit more cleverer than what we really are. That's that's what I, I see it is. But you can't you can't go, well, it proves it, doesn't it? You can't can't get players sent off three times now. And in, and in all those three games, we've dropped points. So it's no coincidence. So I don't know if it's a disciplinary problem, but I think we've got to be a little bit more streetwise to 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 know. I'm not saying the refs are out of gets because they're not. But in, I, I, I do think they're less tolerant with us than other clubs. So you, if you know that, then don't give them the opportunity. So yeah. that's that's how I see it now. Like I don't, I don't, I don't see it as um, that they're out to get us. But why do you go on? No, it's just but you see on Twitter and on, on social media. I don't know if you've seen it. <clears throat> the Leicester game a couple of years ago when um, yep. It, it's actually worse than what the Saliba one was. And it's a yellow card, nothing said. So I do, there is something in it, but I, I but I, it's going to take me a lot more to convince me that, that, that it is. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I don't quite think there's a conspiracy theory against Arsenal, but I no. do think we're judged differently. And if you agree with us kind of being ref differently and stuff, why do you think that is like who at Arsenal upset whoever they upset to be in this situation? Because it does feel like there's one rule to a degree for us and, and then others. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. I, I look at it and go, um, you know, like the, the incidents with the, um, the ball kicking. I, I, I go back to the one, the one that really like I look at it and I think is the Trossard one. Like, you know, I think the yeah. referee can can get out of that. And I, and I've seen the referee referees get out of it by when there's a little bit of controversy, um, blow the whistle for half time or, or things like that. Do you know what I mean? I, I don't know if you remember the game against um, who did we play? Brighton. And it got a little bit. Nasty with it. Yeah. The fellow was on a booking anyway, and he, he he said for half time. So there was that. That's the end of it. I felt in that game there, Oliver could have been a little bit more tolerant, but he wasn't. And then I see another game when when he is tolerant, and and you know, so it is. We don't know. We don't help ourselves at times. You know what I mean? Like you know, even exactly. the Declan Rice one. Do you know one with the Declan Rice? Right. I look at that and. I think that, oh, he's given me no choice. Well, there is loads of choices there. If you really want to go down and go deep into it, there are choices. You could turn around and go, do you know what? The free kick wasn't in the right place. Et cetera, et cetera. But, but there just seems to be no leeway with Arsenal players. You know what I mean? Like I, right. I, look, at, I look at the game yesterday, um, Chelsea versus Liverpool. Now, do we want a Chelsea player sent off as early as that when you're playing against one of your rivals? Not really. 
But when you see the what happens with us, and uh, I've had a look at it on a couple of times, it's slightly different because it's 10 yards or five yards um, back. Does that really make a difference? Really Still make a difference? One clip on goal, really. Yeah. I, I don't think it does. So if you're sending someone off for that, so this is what annoys me about it. I, I, you know, I said, look, well, it's a sending off. Let's see what happens when it happens again for someone else. It happens the next day. And knowing what you've seen at the Arsenal game, surely it's a sending off. Surely it's Zero consistency, off. Lee, man. And then you look at the Wolves game slightly different, but, you know, VAR had its own part to play. I think Wolves are the only team that, away from Arsenal, could complain about being harshly oh, treated by refs, man. I, I, listen, I, the Wolves game, I've looked at that a hundred times. <laughs> and he's actually... Failing when he when he's let, oh, is, is he failing him or what? He's actually failing when he's actually on side because you can't be offside from a from a um, a corner. And then he when the corner he does well. He, he actually stops what he's doing when when you know the timing of it's perfection. I go, go back. There was a foul before that in the build up when he's pushed completely in the back. That's now a good I point. see. Yeah, I, I I see like that. If that was Arsenal, right, that would be a free kick. Yep. That would be a free kick. I've got no doubt about it because I see incidents like that at Bournemouth yesterday uh, when there was a free kick. I, I see Ben White uh, get fouled uh, uh, and the referee went, yeah, foul. And then five minutes later, it happened to Arsenal and he played on. Different just, rules, yeah. Things yeah. like that. I, 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 you think, oh, you're being petty and all that. You're not being petty. It's just how it is. I, I do think Arsenal were a referee different to, to, to certain. To, now, you'll get a Wolves come on, the uh, fan come on and go, well, you know, you're complaining about... And I get that. I get that. We're not... No, we're, they've had some horrendous decisions. They've had some diabolical decisions yeah. not going horrendous, on. Horrendous. Horrendous decisions. Uh, and we've had a few as well, you know what I mean? So, listen, I, I remember... Um, uh, what was it that the only goal that's ever been scored and given from a corner when a goalkeeper was being fouled was at Aston Villa a couple of seasons ago. I don't know if you remember at Ramsdale, climbed all over Ramsdale. No, given as a goal. Any other game, it's not a goal. Doesn't affect us because we go down the other end and score, but it could have done, you know what I mean? So, listen, it is what it is. You have to, but if I'm Mikel now, don't give these referees an opportunity you know we've all played you've played football i played football you, you know refs I've, I've played with refs you know you, you get you, oh great he, he never gives me nothing this ref for whatever reason just don't so give a decision don't, to me yeah so you don't give him the decision to make exactly that it, it, exactly that you know you don't give him the decision to make I, I, I felt Saliba could have done a lot better than what he did I, I don't think I think he should have run with him he's got the legs on him um and Arsenal have proved that, you know, Ben White could have got covered for it along that line. I, I just felt that we, it was sloppy. We were sloppy on the day, sloppy uh, in every in, in decision making as well. And Saliba has to hold his hands up to that, um, and 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 you know, um, makes it more tougher for us. Is is it's Liverpool next? You know, so he knew that as well. You know, you got Liverpool coming up. You know, if you do something silly. I'd like to ask him the question, if he was playing in the cup final the next week, would he have done that? <laughs> Very much no. No, no, it wouldn't be that. To be fair, he's only got a split second to think about it. But oh, I, I, I know that. You definitely, I... definitely, definitely wouldn't. I'm with you. If you had a Champions League final, you're not going to do that. That's going to be in the back of your mind. And yeah, that's what like, me. Exactly. So if that was a semi-final of Champions League, you know that if you do that, you get sent you're off. Gone. Do you Do you put the extra yards in and run him down. I, I just think it was lazy from him. If it I'm was lazy. Because he had a lot to do. The striker had a lot to yeah. do. Like, like you said, you had White covering. Saliba's quite quick. This is assuming he even gets to our goal to ask a question of David Raya. It didn't need to happen. I know Trossard's dropped him in it. And I think Trossard has to take some responsibility. Sure. But I think that just sums up a poor day at the office. Like, What have you made of our defending this season? Because I don't feel we've been up to our high standards. No, I think like the last few games have been sloppy. You know, like people listen, we're in a we're in an industry now and in a world of social media and football where you you you've got to be careful or, or say things like, you know, I, I've seen this coming. I've seen this sort of performance coming, like, you know. And, and realistically, I think it's on the manager as well as the players, because I look at us, 
I don't think we played well since no, Man City. Since Man City. We played, was excellent Man City. That first half of Man City was excellent. Uh, unbelievable. They, they they give us our best punch punches. We took them and we, we, we deflated them. They were panicking. Then we come into the defending side of it and we defended magnificently well. We've not defended like that since. Yeah, you know, you're like, on the money. You, you, you go two home games. Poor. Yeah, you go to the next game, Leicester at home, and you, you struggle. Southampton at home, you struggle. Look at the goal we conceded in that game, and and then and then the game against uh, Bournemouth. So it, it's been there, you know. But people turn around and you go, "Well, what are you moaning about? Because you're winning." Just you know what I mean? Like, I, I get that, but but we've got eyes. You've got yeah. You can see what's coming, and 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 uh, look, listen. Don't, <laughs> don't be under no illusions or anything. That Mikel knows that as well. But what I see on Bournemouth, I've seen it too many times under facts uh, under Mikel. Look, uh, and and I don't mean that as a criticism because listen, I've seen us play really really well on, on many occasions, and we're really challenging it. But when you're Challenging on an elite side and going for it, you cannot have performances like that, like the Southampton one. You know, one or two, one or, one or two of them a season you can go in, but we're in what eight games, nine games. Yeah, and, and it's become a team now. Yeah, and I'm going to bring in the Atlanta game as well. Yeah, hundred percent performance, shocking performance. But that one was masked and and myself as well because it was in between Tottenham and Man City. So I get that boy. You know what I mean? If you get get out there with a point, didn't play well. Not a problem. Uh, and so you have to take results and performances in a context. And that was one of them. So you, you, you wash it yourself. But when you look at it, in the cold light of day. We, it's happening we have, too frequently now, man. Yeah. There's a, there's a few too many of them. Um, and listen, you can always have games where you don't play. You play well and, and things don't go out and the ball go. You know, we've all been there. Every time the ball deflects, it goes to one of them. You shot, it's the bar and the post and the goalkeeper's making save after save. You can walk off the pitch and go, do you know what? We are unlucky. We give it a roll and all that. But it's that sort of performance yesterday, uh, sorry, Saturday, where I, where I see players not at it and not... How can I say it without being... I don't want to be too disrespectful to us. No, I say how you how it is, Lee, man. This is why we are here. Say how it is, man. Say how it is. I felt in that first 20 minutes, 25 minutes of that game, that Bournemouth players wanted it more than Arsenal players. I, I agree, man. For me, it was flat. It was lackluster. It's like we're still on international break mode, if I'm honest. Yeah. So I, I, I look at that and I don't like that. And that's why I get upset and angry and I, I get like I am over the last couple of days. This is why I'm happy you're here because that's exactly what I tried to convey. It's all about the performance, man. Yeah, yeah. See, so, you know, I, listen, we lost to Newcastle last season. We lost to Aston Villa last season. We lost to uh, Aston Villa home and away. Of course, you're disappointed when you, when you lose. But at the end of the day, I can get back in the car, or get walk, walk away from the stadium thinking, well, we was unlucky. There was there was circumstances in that. You know, you, you take your medicine. There's something to salvage from the games. Yeah, and there's, there was positives to take from it or whatever. Like, you know, uh, uh, you know, you can, can go on that there. But yes, uh, Saturday's performance, I'm looking at it and going, right, you know, everything about that was wrong. The team set up was wrong. The way we come out and played. Uh, and forget about the sending off. Let's just go from that 30 minutes. We're playing Bournemouth. We're challenging for the title, a chance to go top of the league, to really put a statement out there. After 30 minutes, we've not had a shot. <laughs> yeah, and not offering nothing in the midfield. That's why I would have probably, in hindsight, I wonder if Arteta said, would have said, you know what, should I have played Ethan? If, I mean, he's young, he's obviously probably closer to Odegaard than what we have. If he plays great, great. If he stinks up the place, take him off. I, I, do you think Arteta has to be a bit braver with his lineups in an yeah. attacking sense? Yeah. I, 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 listen, <laughs> yeah. You can't say nothing, you know, uh, you're bang out of order if you're slagging off um, Arteta. I've even, like, people who have accused me of wanting to get... I've never, ever said since this last couple of years... You're not allowed to criticise Lee, man. You're not allowed to criticise, I, I, you know. Um, I, I love Mikel Arteta. Don't, don't, and I'll stick up for him for... for, for, right, for right. Uh, uh, and, and listen, there's a conversation at the moment going around. We all know it. If he doesn't win a trophy this season, what uh, do you want him out and all that? And I, I'm thinking, look... 
I don't even know why that conversation is about at the moment. Like, you know, this has been, we're on a free, listen, three years down the line, we, we, we're challenging for the title against a team that's unbelievable, if, if you look at it from that point. Juggernaut, of view. powerhouse in city. But yeah. So, you, you know, you're up against it, but you're, you're challenging them and getting closer to them and closer to them. So, it shouldn't even be a conversation. But as soon as you uh, say, uh, like, criticism, and I, I, I feel that, Mikel should have been criticised. I don't think he, he, he's he, he's come out and criticised Martinelli. He's come out and criticised Saliba, or he hasn't come out and criticised himself and hold his hands up like you know. So I feel like you know um, you should be criticised. Oh, you re- you deep down you want him out. Deep down you don't like him. And all the that. dictatorship at times, man. Absolutely. You're not right. allowed to say anything bad about him. No, and why not? Why not? That's, like you said earlier, Lee, social media, it's like if you're not blowing hot smoke off his ass all the time, you know, you don't like him and things like that. You're not above criticism. I always say if you play well and do good things, you get praise. If you look shaky, you get criticism. If I if I rate Mikel Arteta this much and call him a genius, if genius things don't happen on the pitch, I believe you need to ask questions personally, like against Bournemouth. Of course you do, and, and, and rightly so. And it doesn't matter if I'm right on whether I'm wrong or, or, or whatever you're right or wrong. It, you're you're a fan, you you know what I mean, like and and this this thing about oh you you go to games and pay your money and all that. Listen, a fan is a fan, whether you watch it on TV or you watch it uh, uh, go to games and all that. It's no different. I, like my dad never used to go to games in the end, like but I tell you, he's as much as passionate as I was when we lost. You know what I mean and, and things like that. But you pay for it through Sky TV or or TNT or whatever, you're still paying. So you've got an opinion. And at the end of it, it, it doesn't you're not right or you're not wrong. It's, it's the way it is. And listen, people, you know, I, I, listen, people go at me, ah, oh, you're a flip-flop because one week you're... you're, you're, you're That's one thing they can't them. accuse you of, man. That's one no, thing I'm, I won't have I'm, them saying on, man. No, listen, definitely not. I don't mind that. I, I think football fans are flip-flops because I go from game to game. So if Arsenal win next week against Liverpool and we win 2-0, I will be praising the players, Mikel, and whatever. But that's how, it's, how it is because you that's go... That's how it's from, supposed to be. That's how it's supposed to be. You go from game to game. I went to Bournemouth on... Um, Saturday. On Saturday morning, or you know, travelling up there, proud to be an Arsenal fan. Proud, you know what I mean? Like we're going to win this game, buoyant, like you know. I've got, I've gone to Arsenal games four or five years ago. Didn't know what I was going to get. With <laughs> yeah, yeah, before. almost right off already before they kicked the ball. Yeah, but I go to games now thinking that we're going to win. So when you lose and you lose like that, and you lose to a Bournemouth team, and no disrespect to Bournemouth, they they, they play really well on the day, but um, I'm going to be upset and disappointed, and. I don't know about you, and when people go out, oh, and I see it on comments when you do shows and all that, it's one game. Get out. I'd love to be like you, mate, where <laughs> you can just say, "I oh, we've lost the game and get on with it." I'm not. I'm not like that. I'm. I'm. I. I you know. I'm. I'm passionate about it. Like you know. I'm. A, I, I'll probably go over the top when we win, and I'll probably go over the top when we lose. It's football. It's an emotional sport. We love it. We love the team. Yeah. And not everybody's the same. So. I'd love to be able to just walk away from 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 Bournemouth on Saturday and go, ah, oh, well, it's one of those games. Let's get on with it. Move on. Don't worry about it. I'm, I'm on till Tuesday. You know, I, I I come out of the game going, oh, I don't even want to go Tuesday now. You know <laughs> what I mean? Like, but come tomorrow, I'll be. You're ready. ready. I'm ready for it again. I'm ready to go through the through the mill again on Sunday. That's how it is. And so I, I do think I'm entitled as an Arsenal fan to criticise who the bloody hell I want. There you are. Because if you was praising, no one's got a problem with the praise. So why can't you criticise? As long as it's done, which I think you do with context, you're not effing and blinding and this guy's crap, that guy's crap. You're commenting on what you see. If we played well against Bournemouth, me and you are sitting here and we're singing the praises of everybody, especially if we won with 10 men. But we didn't. Why have we got to lie? I don't get it with football fans. That, that, especially that, 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 that's a great point. And the, and the point of it is, and this is our fine lines, are, if Martinelli scores that goal, we'd probably win the one game 1-0. One and then 90 I'll seconds after that, that chance, they scored. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I'll, I'll be turning around and going, well, I'm arse class from Mikel. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah. Harry done that fantastic. Like, you know what I mean? But the fact of the matter is that it wasn't. You know, the setup was wrong from the start. That is why we had the 30 minutes that we did. Now, hindsight's a wonderful thing. You know what I mean? Like, and I, 
uh, when when the when the team sheet come out, you, you we do a thing where well, what's going to be your starting line up and whatever, like, yeah. you know. You know, sometimes I pick exactly what Mikel's picked. I didn't pick what Mikel picked on on set. On, on I'm guilty Saturday. of that with the midfield I did, to be fair. No, no, so, so, but that, you know, I, I, I looked. At, I, I said I would play Jesus up there, Trossard in in the hole. That was my thing. Not 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 Wanieri. I, I I get it. That he maybe not. He's not quite ready yet, and whatever. Every time I see him, though, I think that he may be that he is. When the team team come through and and the three players were in midfield, I actually said on the stream. Uh, on my show, like, if he plays that, you know, I, I, it's not what I would pick, but it should be enough to win the game of football against Bournemouth. Exactly, like, that's that's how I, I look at it. International football is in the middle in the midfield. Yeah. It's good enough to be, play better than what we saw, in my opinion. But it, but it, but it didn't work. And the reason, exactly. is, in my opinion, the re if you're picking a player. Uh, and you can argue about it, and people could come on. You know, Robbie's arguing with me. Oh, he's a Spanish international. Like, if you pick a player at the moment to play in that role, or ever it be Marino or Wanieri, right? Because he's decided to play Trossard out left. So Trossard's not who's been playing there anyway. Like, I don't he's know why he's out there, 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 but he has done that. That's and that's another story. For me, Wanieri has done more in in that position and, and merited a start. For Arsenal, the Marino. The only way that Marino has merited a start for Arsenal is because of his transfer fee. That's the only reason that he's married, you know, and he's a Spanish because and maybe a bit of experience against a bit of experience, but, but that's but, it. But but when year he's done more in an Arsenal shirt than he has. So and he's fitter. He, yeah. So when it doesn't work, you have to blame you, you know, manager for that. You know? Exactly. You have to hold that. You have to hold that, and 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 that's down on that. that it's not down on Marino. I I, I thought we done okay and weren't, weren't awful, but it, it it messed up our patterns of play. We couldn't. It's we couldn't. Square pegs in round holes, man. Yeah, couldn't, we, couldn't, we, couldn't build in midfield. He was. He, it's like for me, Mireno's going forward. He's like trying to join Havertz, then he's dropping deep. It's just. It's just everyone was on an island in midfield for me. Yeah, it, it was. We didn't have no connections. You know, you, you need a connector. Exactly. You need a connector. Someone that's gonna. Be at the point for the triangles and things. You missed like our that. captain, man. Yeah, yeah, we 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 did. We haven't said that in other games, though, have we? That, yeah, because we've got because we've got away with it and got the job done. Because probably like yeah, and we've got the job done, and and Trossard's done a job where it hasn't been. It's not been. Come on, let's be honest. Trossard's been in there. It's not been the same as the free flowing when Odegaard's in. We know that it's never going to be. You know, Odegaard's one of the best midfield players in the in Europe. So you you. The drop off's going to be there, but we've got we've managed it and got away with it. So, why you've done that, and then you've gone and changed all that for for whatever reason? You've gone and ch took Trossard out of there and decided to put him on the wing when you had Jesus out there. You could even play Wanieri out there if you wanted to. You, there, there I was said that as well. You're right. There was options out there, but you chose to do that. You got to hold, you've got to hold that. That's your mistake. That is on the on our manager, and you have to. Right. Have to say it like you know, and listen, I, I I'm I, I'm in groups I've got with, with my mates and things like that, and I, I I pick up afterwards what they're saying to say maybe sometimes to say what I'm going to say on an interview or whatever. Like, and I'm looking in my group like they're all like you know passionate about the Arsenal, and every one of them slagging off that performance up to you know to to to, to what was it thirty minutes. Mm. Crap, not at it today. What's the going on? Just overshadows what was a poor performance in yeah. general, anyways, even with 11. Yeah, yeah, but but listen, you know, that, that you, you'll get people come on and go, ah, oh, well, you know, good sign of a good team when you're winning and, you, and, you, and you're playing bad and all that. And I agree with that, but you keep playing bad, what's going to happen? Exactly, eventually, you're not going to win the games, man. You're gonna eventually, you're going to get what you deserve, you're not going to get out of jail. Yeah, and, and if you if you keep getting players sent off, what's going to happen? Eventually, yeah, you can't always hold on. So, so, you know, it's not rocket science in football. It's not rocket science. So, it's a science. simple game. It's a simple game. You've got to, Listen, Arsenal have... have and, and this is where football's a wonderful game. I'll tell you why it's a wonderful game. Because you go to Aston Villa, who've lost one game all season, and you beat them. You go to Tottenham, your rivals... Right up there now, about six in the league. We'll be in the top six at the end of the day. Beat them. Don't concede a goal. Go to Man City with ten men. Don't Correct. lose the best team in in United. And then you lose to Bournemouth. 
And suddenly work everything doesn't matter anymore. Work that out. But that's football. That's what can happen. If you're not on it and not in the right frame and what's all like, you know, your, your setup's not right or whatever, your um, preparation... Mentally, I don't think right, it is with it as well. Mentally not up for the game, you will get done. And that is we always exactly say this is the hardest league in the world. You can't slip yeah. off. Every game's difficult. You've got to it. be on it. You've got to be. You can't take liberties. I felt we took liberties with Back. the team selection. I think he, you know, um, I, I, listen, we all make mistakes. Managers make mistakes. And I get I get that, you know, he's my, but he could rectify it. After 30 minutes, before that sending off, he could rectify it. Once the sending offs that come along, he could, right, okay, there's another decision to be made. I think he made the wrong decision taking Sterling off. Same. I think yeah. Sterling was the easiest one to take off, if I'm yeah, honest. It, again, that's what I'm saying. What I, I will say, and I, this is where I criticise Mikel. Who is this ruthless person, apparently? Ruthless. Right? Well, you weren't ruthless with your with your team selection because you went with... Ruthless to give you, or that's about it. Yeah, you went with the easy option with Marino. That's an easy option to say, like, you know, I can leave the kid out. But I can't, up, but you know what I mean? Like, but you took to a 30, 30 million pound or how much Spanish international. I'm leaving you out for a fit 70 is a difficult decision. I get that it's difficult, you know what I mean? And, and what, listen, managers up and down the country have all made the easy decision. Then you've got another decision to make do you go bold or do you, do you not? Listen, he, he went the way he done. If Martinelli scores that goal, you look at it, you, know, you know what. He got that spot on because he, he he kept it tight at the back, brought Martinelli on last 10, 15 minutes because he's probably not fit enough to, to do the 90. Bangs in the winner. <sighs> Masterclass. Three points, insurance going into the Liverpool oh, game. Ah, good. What a manager we got. <laughs> and you would be, I would be the first one to be jumping on that bandwagon. And I'd but be with didn't. you titling my videos such yeah. as well. <laughs> Masterclass. But it didn't. It didn't. It didn't happen. And we ended up losing the game. And then... You're making substitutions when you're two 0 down, bringing them, and which upset a lot of people in on you know fans and all that. I get that the game's gone anyway, like you know. What I mean, he tried to do something with the game plan. It wasn't as as adventurous as what I felt it should be for a game against Bournemouth. If if that was um, Chelsea, Liverpool, or something like that, I get it. Yeah, especially but, the midfield. I don't oh, understand yeah, it. Okay. But against Bo against Bournemouth, I don't know. And also against a Liverpool, will he play that free in midfield again? Let's see if he plays that free in midfield I again. I think he might, you know. I actually midfield. think he might. Because I, I, I think it would have, in hindsight, it would have made more sense to do that against Liverpool. Because as you said, like I could get it. Liverpool are, you know, one of the best teams in the world on the transition. We need to be a bit fuggish and and and, and stuff like that in midfield. And then there's a trade-off where you, you lose Odegaard. No one can replicate that. Do you go with that? I don't know. He could very well start Ethan on, on such, is it Sunday? On, on Sunday. But I don't think he will. And I agree with you in that it's the easiest decision. It's like, for me, and I want to kind of ask you about midfield, like, do you feel Declan Rice is at eight? What do you think of party? And what have you made of Moreno so far? It's difficult with Mikel Moreno because yeah. he's been injured and whatnot. But he just felt like he was trying, he's trying to make him do a lot in midfield. And ultimately, he's done nothing. Yeah, like Marino first, you know, he's been injured, so you can't really say. I've, I've, I've liked his like cup, cap, uh, cameos that he's done. It, 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 that weren't his position. On if 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 he was coming in as that's our new number ten, you'd be panicking. We're in trouble, man. You, you were in trouble, like because he, you could tell him it wasn't his position. But I liked his industry. I liked his work rate. You know, the one thing I will say about him. When I when I said about ten minutes earlier that you know that the Bournemouth players were up for it, he weren't one of them. He was one of them that really put a, put a shift in, and it just didn't happen for him. Uh, I, I like to see him when he's playing in in in, he, in his role. Um, but I will say this now: you do, uh, okay, you're right. I'm not dropping Thomas Party for him. Thomas Party is, is is the holding midfield player. So basically, what people are saying is, I'll drop Thomas Party, put Declan Rice in there. And put Marino in there. I'm not going. It's on like the, they look at Marino as a Jacka replacement. Yeah, I'm, I'm, two not different going, players. I'm not going down that route there. What I'm looking at it now is that I I think that for me, I wouldn't I wouldn't mind seeing Thomas Party being rested for for Tuesday, 
and 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 then being back for Saturday, and then vice versa, or, or Declan Rice getting a couple of games rest and all that. Like you know, these three can alternate games now. Um, I, I think with Declan Rice, I like Declan Rice going box to box. I've got to say, I do like it. We weren't questioning it last season, were we? When he no, played, no, no, we definitely didn't. Because he was like, but I don't think he's been, he's had the rest and recovery time that he, he needed after the, you know what I mean? He's he's not quite at the levels he was last season. So for me, give him a little, not give him, give him a rest in, in, in a game or two here and there. Like I wouldn't play him in the next two midweek games. You know, we've got Preston, you know, get, get, get a bit of a break there. And that's where Marino can come in. Like, but long-term, I, I, I think if Arsenal, be, if you really, I think we need someone else long term. We I need some, some guy in the middle of the park, man. Like, yeah. we need like a Cesc Fabregas or a Santi. I know they're difficult to find, but that's what I feel we're missing. We're missing a connector in the middle of the park. I think we need the, the one thing that I, I think that we're missing is a player that, and I, this is why I like uh, Wayne Yeri, and I think he's going to be a quality player for us. He's someone in those little pockets that's prepared to yep. go past players. Go past players. Break the lines that way. We break lines fantastically well with passing and movement and triangles. But sometimes, you know what I mean, kill a team with kindness. Do it every little way, you know? Yep. You know what I'm saying? Like, So you need someone that's going to then, you know, like, right. oh, they're going to pop it off. They're popping it off and then he goes past some. Jack Wilshere used to do it fantastically well. Lovely someone example. Like used to glide past players for fun. Glide past players. Someone like that is what we need. And I think Wayne Yeri is that person. But um, again, as much as I like Wayne Yeri, if I'm if you're saying right, we got we got um, Man City at home, everybody's fit. My midfield, he's not starting. Ethan. He's not starting in that midfield. That, let's he's, get not, that right. not. he's not starting that right. It, exactly that. He's not starting. You're, you're going to go Odegaard, Party, uh, and Rice, or you're going to go Marino. One of them four, right? We we More know likely that. to see Jorginho start before Ethan, in my opinion. In yeah, contest. maybe, maybe, but but but. The, the season's 38 games and you've not got Man City every week. And, and you've got teams like Bournemouth, you've got teams like Leicester and you've got teams like Southampton where you should be able to, if you've got a good enough squad, to say, do you know what, Declan, I'm giving you a rest today or I'm gamble a bit, gamble a bit and put in these players and get them going and give them that bit of experience. You know, we're having to play Saka. Ran him into the ground, man. Yeah. And he's not about now. Southampton and Leicester. And then, you know, see, the other thing is with me, and uh, you, whether you think I'm right or wrong on this side, you know, I'm thinking, right, we've got to, let, we've got to rest Saka against Leicester and Southampton or even Declan Rice. Again, because when they go to England, they're getting no rest. Yeah, yeah, they're getting, getting run into the ground. They're getting run into the ground for England. You know, Declan Rice is the, there's only one player played more minutes, and uh, which has changed now, by the way, after the last international. There was one player that's played more minutes. Really Rodri. Trying to guess it. No, no, oh, in, no. In, in England squad. Oh, England oh fair squad. enough. One player has played more games, more minutes than Declan Rice. So since since Declan Rice signed for Arsenal, he's the second most minutes player for England. And the first is Pickford. Yeah, I was just about to say, it's got to be the goalie. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, so, we ran him into the ground. He ain't had a break. He played, two, he played two friendlies in March last year. I don't know if you remember him, like, captain them and, and, and played both games. Yeah. You know, so you so you are thinking right, well, and I know it's not right, but you think to yourself, right, I've got to rest um I've got to rest we've got to rest Rice against Preston and maybe against Shakhtar because you know in in two weeks' time or three weeks' time when the international break is, he's playing both of those games. So when is he getting a break? You I don't know, think he reason, ever is. No, and the reason he's jaded at this moment in time, in my eyes, is because what he done for, for England in the summer, not for us. I so, think that's a good point. So we're we're getting affected by him, and I, I I see a lot of fans at the moment ready to. The, what's the word I'm looking for? They're ready to to pounce on Rice. He's not doing well. He's not doing well. They're smelling blood. Somebody needs a target. Yeah. There's always a scapegoat as yeah. Fans, and I, think man. Like, you know, I mean, he's not playing as well as what he weren't last season. He isn't. But I don't think he's nowhere near. You know, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll tell you what, there's a great, great thing. Um, I don't know if you've seen it. The, the Crystal Palace manager like, had, had done an interview over the weekend. And he, he he's right what he said. And I, I, it was unbelievable what he said. He said, it's not the amount of games you play. 
these players can play 50 games a season. Declan Rice can play 50, 60 games. No problem on that. It's the recovery yeah. in between that. It takes 48 hours to recover from a football you game. Have, like, you look at what we're going through now. Boy. Yeah. So the reco- So when you think about uh, a game now against Tuesday, we've got like a big, important Champions League game. So you've got Sunday and Monday, which you should be your recovery time. And then you've got to go straight back into it on Tuesday, right? So where's your training session? You've got to have a training session in between that. So you don't get enough recovery time. And that's the di- the difference. Declan Rice had three weeks off in um, in the summer. Three, three weeks off, 10 days training, back in it and, and, and up and running again. You know, years ago when I was playing football, we used to get like two months off. You know what I mean? Like re-energise, come back, you know what I mean? Like... I didn't even agree with it, but Wenger always used to like give players a bit of time off before yeah. the start of the for them at the start of the season if they play for their countries. Pep does it now, doesn't he? he yeah, you know, Pep done it with Folden and a couple others. But we haven't been able to do that, and 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 that that's where I think Arsenal have got to change, and and, and Mikel has got to change as well. Trust your squad a little bit more. It might not be the greatest performance in the world, but trust it. You know what I mean? Like you've got players in there. Uh, and, and I felt that there was a lack of trust in 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 certain players on on um, on on Saturday. Lack of trust on Wayne Yeri to go in that role. Well, I'm on the game's dead, really. Yeah. Just give you yeah. some minutes yeah, well, at the end of the season. You know that's no good. It's not going to help them. Brave manager, brave manager says right. Do you know what I mean? Like, and like I, I, I'm not in all this thing. Ah, oh, Arsenal are relying on a 17 year old. Like, you know, we're not relying on a 17 year old. We're not. We're we're good, good enough to be in the mix. We've been we've, we've been put in a position. We've got players injured. You know what I mean? Like, we wouldn't be having this conversation with Wanyeri if Odegaard's fit. We wouldn't be having this conversation, but we are because he's not. Because he's and, not. Yeah. And and so you, you trust you know trust him, trust him. And, you know, when is he going to trust him next? Preston away? Yeah, where well, he's going to be in a disjointed team anyways, man, exactly. if I'm honest with you. Like, exactly. that's, you're right. That's the only time. Unless Arteta's got a shocker for us. He's not playing against Liverpool. No, I don't really see him in this run of games where we've got Chelsea, Newcastle away, Liverpool at home. He's not the manager with everything that's at stake. He's not going to play him. That make, that makes me want to ask you, Lee. Like, obviously, you look in the summer. We did some good business. We, we we left a lot on the table. Do you think we've addressed the depth? And if we haven't, how far does this go with Mikel Arteta and Edu? Because for me, I think back to February. I can't remember the game, but Mikel Arteta had his press conference and he said, we've got one of the smallest squads in the league. Now, that has always stuck with me months later. And I don't personally feel we, we did enough in the summer. Of course, it's easy for me as a fan to sit here and say we could have did this, that and the other. But I'm just a fan. It's just down to me to judge. It's a results business. Mm. I don't feel collectively were stronger for the additions it's a it's a it, it's a great debate and I, I and i'm gonna be i got you here. I, I, i'm gonna say this now i think right that mikel doesn't want a big squad he doesn't want to work with a big squad it's his preference now there's a lot of managers like that you know i've spoken to managers that have, uh, you know they like playing with a small small squad because then what 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 have you got you've got 20 odd players, let's say 20, 22 players. And you know, deep down, 11 are going to be happy. Yeah. Right. That, that's, that's done. The first, the 11 is happy. Six are going to be slightly unhappy. Three are going to be furious because they're not even, uh, getting they're not on. even having a look in. And then you've got another three or four that are not even in it. So when everybody's fit, it's a difficult job. You know, I, I think when everybody's fit at Arsenal, I don't think there's an issue. I don't think there's an but issue. When is that a case though? That's the thing that yeah, happens. Yeah, exactly us. that. The when is that a case? It's never a case. You're always going to have injuries, particularly with some of our players. You know what I mean? We've got like Tommy Asu down at this moment in time, you know, but if you, if you look at it from the, from the defensive point of view, if everybody's fit, how do you, you've got a problem. You've got a problem. How are you going to keep Tommy Asu fit? Timber or, or or Ben White, you you you're, you're thinking there, or Calafuri, you know, it, it's 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 not easy to manage. So sometimes managers think, do you know what? I'll go with a smaller squad and and make it easier for myself. Now I'm not saying that's a get out. You know, it, it, everybody feels a part of it, like and and you you've got a. a, a good band of brothers sort of thing. I think Arsenal have got that. You know, every player that comes in there knows it. They've got a role to play, or they're going to be. They're not just there for the numbers. So, 
I get it on one side of it all that, but when you've got injuries and and and, and let's let's be it, face it now, we've 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 got a few. I I think we've got a massive problem at the defence at the moment, like because yep. uh, Saliba out now, Shinchenko not not um not for for Tuesday, but like come Sunday, we're not too sure about Timber. Shinchenko not quite fit enough yet. Like Tommy Saliba, Asu's not going to be involved. Tommy Asu's not out of it, so we're. If say for instance Timber doesn't play in that game, so my my back four for um for the game against Liverpool before this before Bournemouth was Ben White at right back, Saliba Gabriel Timber, and he sticks on uh, Salah like you know a little bit like like Tommy Asu did for a like couple Tommy of, did a couple of years yeah. ago. So that that would have been it. That's gone there. So I'm thinking right. Well, where do you go now? Who do you put in at right? Who's a right back then? Um, all right, we 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 say Ben White, but then who's coming at central defence? Oh, you you would say Tommy, but Tommy's not fit. He's not. Keep your. I'm not really here, but that's a contender. Do you like left field choice? Do you put Declan Rice there? Do you put Ben White centre half? And like you said, who plays right back? Do you put Timber there? Will Timber look as good at centre half as he would at left and right back? Do you right. put Calafuri enough two left footers? Lee, I'm happy. I'm not Arteta. I don't know. This, this this is the problem that he's got. You know what I mean? So so ideally now you're looking at it and probably going like, well, hopefully Timber's fit. And he can play like either right back or central, central defence. Or it's Ben White can go in there. If not, you're talking like maybe, and I'll tell you that it's going to be a conversation. This because it's an easy get out. It's almost party going out there, bringing even in. that. Yeah, that that is something. But then it's not what we want to see against Liverpool. It's not what you want to see. So there's a there's a problem there. But but when everybody's fit, it's not a problem. But we're not having this debate. But we're not having this debate in midfield. I don't think there's too much of an issue. We, we, you know, we've got we've got what we've got in there at the moment in time. And I think up front, if everybody's fit, not a problem. Mark, Mark you know, like it, you look at the Bournemouth game, and it, it, you know, you're taking your two best wide players out. Martin Ellie wasn't fit enough to start and Saka. So if 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 they're fit, Havertz up front. I don't think there's there's two there's goals in that and and, and whatever. And you, you can say that it was a little bit disjointed because of things like that. But there's injuries, and then so when you've got players like Sterling and, and Jesus, they've got to step up. They've got to step up. Few of the more experienced players in the squad, Lee. Yeah, because, of course. But then you know, like Sterling gets the, is the opportunity against Bournemouth after thirty minutes. He's got to come off. Yeah, like you're up to so, You know, for me now. Look at it on Tuesday, giving these players. I I think for me, I'll be playing a, a few more squad players in the Champions League, particularly at home in these sort of games. If we can't beat Shakhtar with a rotated side, forget about it, man. Yeah, Respect and, and it, well, also there's a little bit less pressure off of these guys. You know, we can't afford to even draw in the Premier League. You know what I mean? Let alone lose. <laughs> yeah. So, but in the in in the uh, the context of the way the Champions League is, you can get a couple of draws, and it's not the end of the world. So there's a little bit more freedom to to be able to rotate and all that. So I would rotate in the Champions League uh, and not in the Premier League. You know what I mean? Like you go with your best team in the Premier League all the time. But um, uh, that that's how it is. But I, I do think that the I, I think at the end of the day, this is the thing where I think fans have got the issue with the squad because I think one to eleven Arsenal are probably the best team in the league. I, I think, everybody I, I fit. Think we that, I think we proved it at, at, in that first half against Man City. We went with them. I know that they had players, but we had players missing as well. But ultimately, I think if we put our best eleven out, but it's not about that. It, it is the squad, you know what I mean? And, and Manchester City uh, uh, have got. If I, if I'll be really honest, I feel we needed another two players to go into the squad. What positions? Striker. Hundred percent. Big up uh, Kai Havertz, but I think we do need. Yeah, to. yeah, just to, to, to just to, to go, you know, like in a game like that, you could actually go. Do you know what? I don't know who, who that forward would be. That's the only problem when you go right. Oh, you're going to bring in a forward, like you know, who, who would it be? Like, it'd be the dream then for you as well, Lee, man. If if uh, if, if, Monty was, if we could decide any strike, it'd be the dream, man. While we're here, because uh, I'm saying, is that uh, um, he looks good? He yeah, looks good. I, I, I'd, I'd go with him. He's got that. I think he's. I, I'd go for him. Something different, different profile. But like in a game like that, you can go, do you know what habits? You just drop off a little bit or even play two up top. There was options there. I don't think we got that option as much. So I would have gone there and I, I would have brought in a wide player. Another wide 100%. player. 100%. Um, 
we brought in Sterling, but I, 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 I um, he, he's a stopgap at this moment in time. He's not. It was a panic way. buy, respectfully. Like we're on deadline day, we couldn't make anything happen. Edu yeah. even said himself it wasn't something we planned to do for a club that speaks about you know forward thinking and all of that. We didn't have the window we wanted to towards the end, in my opinion, no. with Sterling. I, I, I listen. I, I know for a fact that they, that they, they, there was someone they wanted they couldn't get. Right, I don't know, See? you know, what I mean? but they, they, they've obviously tried for it, and 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 I like that little bit of business. If I'll be honest, and thinking right, well, we can't we can't get him this season. We might be able to get him next season. Okay, we're getting certain instead of buying somebody else that they don't really want. Little stopgap, as you said. Yeah, so I, I I get that. I get that. But you're in a window of opportunity of trying to win a league here, like you know what I mean. After Do two you... years of flirting with it, where it felt yeah, like for me, not necessarily make or break, but over the top. top. Could they have gone over? The... I don't know who that player was, but could have they? If it was down to money, could have they have made sure of it? I even think we've 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 Cogres. If they'd have got him at a good price, I think they would have took him. But I think it was too much, so. Could you, just, could you just push the boat out just this once, just to make it? Especially the Champions League money as well now. Yeah, and then, and then for the next two years, we didn't have to buy anybody. If do you know, do you know what I'm saying? I know a lot of people go, well, well don't forget next season if we, if we don't renew Tommy Thomas Party and um, uh, Jorginho, we've got to to be looking at bringing in two midfield players next season. That's I think we need two regardless, man. Yeah, too, regardless. So, you know, we're going to be short again next season because we're we're only probably by one midfielder. And, you know, so I, I don't think we're ever, ever going to be sitting... We're never going to have everything, man. No, we're never going to have everything. I, so I, I get that. Um, but I just think that this season, going into the Champions League as well, and what what... What I would say about him when people go, oh, it's a good score, I go, yeah, all right, it's okay. But I think with the Champions League, with more games in it, I felt that we needed to strengthen the, the depth of the squad a little bit I more. Agree. That that would be my that would be my only criticism of it. I'm not saying that the I think the squads are, in quality wise is is better, if I'll be honest, but not not in quantity. It just needed to be deeper, man. Yeah, and I more think... players that Mikel Arteta trusts, in my opinion. I, I get a bit annoyed when I, even me, when I say that the trust thing, because I think it's gone past that. I think Mikel Arteta, this is your squad, whether you bought these players or not, these are your guys. Of course, as you know, there's a hierarchy. There's going to be starting 11s. There's oh, going to be people like Kivio that are on the bench. And if you get minutes, you, you get as you live kind of thing. But I do feel we keep having the same conversations kind of in the last three years. And I know it's easy for me as a fan. I'm not seeing what you're doing off the field, but it feels like even the stuff me and you have spoken about, the things we're seeing as a as fans, it feels like it's gone on for too long now. And it's like, how long are we going to, like, it's, for instance, it's raining. How many times are we going to go out with no umbrella and be complained that we're, that we're wet? Why can't we ever be over prepared for me? Because you now look at the issues we're speaking about centre half and, it, and it's worrying, especially with the performance against Bournemouth. Because, you know, I, I think what led to the penalty with Kivio, he was poor, but it's a simple ball over the top. You do that against Liverpool on Saturday, Sunday, forget about it, really and truly. Do you think it's, do you think it's a must win against Liverpool? I, yeah. I, I have to ask you that. Yeah. Yeah. I do as well, man. Maybe not points wise, but I do as well for morale more than anything. Well, you know, you listen, it was a must win against him last season. There was five points in front of us. Um true. Uh what was the difference? It was towards the end of the season. So um but I I I, I think in the context of it, forget about where it where it, what part of the season it is and all that. You can't afford to let these boys get seven points in front of you. Exactly. Um and, and and seven points in front of you with your next two games, Newcastle and Chelsea away. Especially that Newcastle game. Oof. So listen, uh it's at home. That says it all to me. If you can't oh, beat yeah. Liverpool at home, you won't win the title. And that, that that's how it is. You you've got to beat your rivals at home because the chances are really. you're not gonna beat them away. You know, you might get like if you said to me Beat Liverpool, draw of Liverpool away. Beat Man and City at home, draw, draw them away. I'll bite your hand off for it. Yeah, we'll take that. Kind of like last year to a degree. We'll have that. So we've, we've got the draw at City. So we've got when we play them at home, got to beat them. And it's, for me, it's a no-brainer. you got to beat Liverpool. If you want to win this league, 
let's be honest, you can't afford to drop points at Bournemouth. If, you if, can't, you, if you be honest. But if you do, then you've got to win your own games. Yeah. And you got to, like you said, you've got to take points off your rivals, quote unquote. You're back yeah. on the money. Yeah. So, like, um, yeah, I think like, it is a must win. I, I, I'll go say if Liverpool beat us on um, Sunday, I'll, I'll, Arsenal won't win the league this year, this season. How confident are you in the league title chase? Because for me, it's they give me enough to be inspired about, but I'm I must admit, there's just something really stopping me from saying with chess, we're gonna win the league, we're gonna do this, we're gonna do that. I think I think we'll win the league, in my opinion. I think I still I still think we've got a very, very good chance of winning the league, but games like Bournemouth worry me. <laughs> exactly. I, 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 I'll be honest, those games we shoot ourselves in the foot, man. Shouldn't happen like I, I I I know it's saying see that Manchester City would have still won that game. Man City don't go. make the mistakes that we make. You and know what I mean? I, that, 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 I watched them yesterday and they continue to play exactly the same way with a minute, two minutes. There's no panic. If it doesn't happen, it doesn't one happen. Tempo. It's just one. It, we, we, they believe in what they're doing. I, I think that Arsenal, I still think Arsenal are a little bit erratic at times. A little bit. I, I like the way we played at uh, um, Tottenham. I like the way that we've done that. I love the way we played at Manchester City. Forget about all the criticism and everything like that. That was wonderful. The way we defended and all that. Like, it's courageous. Know, brilliant. But last season, we didn't beat Fulham twice. We lost to West Ham. Um, we didn't beat Aston Villa twice. We we're still making those sort of mistakes. You know what I mean? Like, still shooting ourselves in the foot, man. Yeah. You know, Fulham away last season. That Worst was the one. I know, and I know like, people, like, if you go back to I said, and, 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 listen, I'll be honest, he <laughs> said to me. It's why he'd be 100% honest, man. I, I, after that game against Fulham, if you said you'll go the rest of the season with just losing one game against Aston Villa, I would never have believed you. I would have said you're smoking something I, I, special, I, man. Yeah, 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 you're on crack. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> you know. But I said that day, Arsenal just lost the title. They won't win the league. That we was didn't. the game for me. I, 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 Aston Villa game, no, that game there was the, the one. That was the first half of the season, man. We won the league. And, and, and so you, you don't know, you don't know. Look, you, you, look, football's a fact, you know. We lose to As we beat As we lose to Aston Villa. It doesn't mean to say if we'd have beaten Aston Villa, we'd have gone to Tottenham and Man United and won those games. You just don't know. It was, you, you don't know. know. Yeah, we're it's not like fortunate. A bit of pressure off of us. That's why we went to Tottenham and performed like we did. You know, the pressure would have mounted and all that. No one knows, but I know for a fact that two two things two things that cost us the league last season: our home form and that that game against. Uh, um, Fulham. When it mattered, City were never going to go to Fulham and lose. They, they found it difficult, but they got they found a way. And that's why I think that there's still that thing, as difficult as what it was on um, Saturday, we didn't find a way. And I do think that Manchester City will. And I don't put Liverpool in that because I think Liverpool will have those sort of games themselves. You know, I don't... I, Hopefully I, starting on Sunday, man. Yeah, like, listen, like, listen, they've already... If, if you be really honest, with the run of form that they've had, Liverpool, run of games, they should be unbeaten this moment of time. The, the, the game that they've lost is Nottingham Forest at home, which you would never have fought. So, I, 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 as good as I think that they are and that they will be challenging for the title, I, I if you come ab above Liverpool, that doesn't necessarily mean you win the league. But I think if you, be above, city, man. if you come above Manchester City, you've won the league. And that's the thing, you know, City are going to go on this crazy run of form. And even at City at their worst, they're still better than a lot of teams. And that's what annoys me with Arsenal in the last three years, including now. It's like, before I personally look at City and give them their flowers, I always look at what we can do. And I don't, I feel we shoot ourselves in the foot. I think, you know, the plenty of examples you said last season where we lost games. I know we can't win them all, but it always feels like we don't have that medium. We do show examples where we win ugly, but then we shoot ourselves in the foot. Like, I actually feel in the Champions League, I want to play every game if I could at the Emirates. And I don't really want to play away from home in the Premier League I want to play away from home I think the Emirates is filled with too much drama but then I look at the performance against on Saturday against Bournemouth and it's flipped on its head and it's just like why do we make things harder for ourselves I want to ask you about go on before I ask no, you no, no. listen I, I get what you're saying now I get what you're saying but you got to put it in the context right we've lost two games since that Fulham game which is right right 
one at home, one away. Right? That is not shooting yourself in the foot. That's 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 yeah. unbelievable form. No one can match that. Oh, yes, they can, because Manchester haven't lost since December. It's a shame that they're in this league, man. They're just yeah. so <laughs> so so I get what you're saying when you say that, but in theory, you, you think to yourself, we've lost two games. Not even maybe I am being a bit irrational. Not not even drawn those games. That's two defeats in whatever, and it's still not good enough. That 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 tells you everything, you know, a lot. So I think we have to take it in into uh, perspective from that point of view. You know, like we've we've, we've now gone and drawn the Brighton. That those games are, you know, will be the ones that come back and bite you. Brighton at home, you know what I mean, like. But every team will have that. Like City have had, will have one like that. You know what I mean. So we just got it. But when you think about it, if you say to Tottenham, you say to Man United, you say to everybody, right? Would you take two defeats now to the end of the season? They're by your arm, off, man. So we've been there, and it's still not good enough. My last question for you, then, Lee, before I let you get out of it, then that. Uh... Does Arteta have to? I know you've been asked this, but does Arteta have to win the league? And if we don't win the league, where where do you look at this whole project? Because surely, like you know, there's been a lot of foreplay, not enough penetration, mm. as I always see. <laughs> I <like that. laughs> I, I'm going to be. I think there's a conversation. There's a conversation. It's got to be in context. I think if Arsenal comes second again by a couple of points and all that, I, 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 I'm I, I feel no. Um, if Arsenal come fourth oh, well, and win the FA Cup, would you be happy with that? I mean, I'd be happy with the fact of the FA Cup, but this is the same thing that people were upset about Wenger about. It's kind of the same thing yeah. that we, we wanted to get away from. Like like you said, context is key. I think we need trophies. I do think that buys him a bit of time, but I feel the goalposts will move. I think a lot of people buy your armour for an FA Cup now, but if we go and do that, people say, well, it's still not the big ones. It's not the Champions League. It's not the Prems. So mm. I think the goalposts will move, but I do think Arteta needs some silverware, if I'm I, honest. I, with I don't think he needs some silverware, but he needs to be challenging as well. Exactly that as well, yeah. I'd rather be challenging like we are this month. I've enjoyed the last couple of years more than I... Listen, uh, it's great winning an FA Cup and I've had fantastic times at Wembley, but did I enjoy the league programme those seasons to what I'm enjoying now? No. <laughs> no, we did not. No, we so didn't. I think there's, a, there's, a, there's, there's, there's context there. We've got to be challenging. and If we come second by two points and we win the FA Cup, I'm still going to be unhappy because we've not won the not won the Bingham, but still twenty plus year drought. It, it, you, but you've got a trophy. I I I, I just I, we've got to get over the line. There's going to be a there's going to be a time, whether it be next season, it, there will be the conversation. Is he the man to get us over the line with this team and whatever? Um, my answer to that is yes, he would. Have, yes, he is because he, if it weren't for Man City, we would have, and they're an unbelievable team and whatever. Like you know what I mean. So, what I think, and I, uh, and this is what I, I'm going to say: if we don't win anything, and Manchester City don't win the league, then there's a massive conversation. So basically, yep. if Liverpool yep. win the league right this season, man, uh, and man, and they they not off the man sit off their perch and we done then there's then I think there's a massive conversation. Massive, massive conversation. I I, I think that the, the the pressure is going to mount on him. I don't think Arsenal are going to win the FA Cup. I don't think they're going to win the League Cup. I I, I think that we kind of throw them away really especially the FA Cup since we last won it. We kind of throw them away again this season. I think that because I don't think you can with that squad go it's deep in the enough. Champions League take the to championship to the, to the wire, get to an FA Cup final and a League Cup final. The squad's not strong enough. Not We'd love it, but yeah, it's dream chasing. Yeah, it's dream chasing. It's not going to do it. So I think it will come down to just whether we can win one of the big ones. And when you're playing against one of the big ones, you you know, I, I don't know. I, I, there's no guarantee on it, and there shouldn't be no guarantee, no right that you should win those trophies. So it's going to, you know, it's going to be, I just hope that he does. And it just, that will, I, I, I think if, if Arsenal can get over the line and win the league. Um, well to us, man. Yeah. I, I think you'd, 
you're going to see some big, big things from Arsenal over the next few years. Like, you know, and I mean like coming very close in, because I think that it would be an unbelievable thing for us to do. And I think it would push Arteta on to, to unbelievable heights as a manager. He's got to somehow get over the line though. Where games like Bournemouth and decision making against Bournemouth by playing, I'm not so sure. I'm not so sure. But on a on a on a on a positive note, Pep's made some really weird decisions at times and and with team selection and lost games and been criticised and still gone on and won it. I know we, you know, it's not the same thing. So I'm um, listen, it's one bad game at this moment in time. You are forgiven, Mikel. You have made mistakes. You Back. are forgiven. Go and do the business now against Liverpool. And who's forgiven, man? Who's forgiven? Yeah, like, exactly. You know what I mean? Like, and, and you can win this league. I, I, I think he can win it. I think he's good enough to do it. I think the team's good enough to do it. I think and I think they want it as well, man. Maybe yeah, not well, against Bournemouth, I can't say you did, but generally I think you lot want it. I think they really do want it. It might be a blessing in disguise, that performance, because... I hope so. Like, you know, you know if you're not up for it, you're going to get beat. You know that now. As a reminder. A, 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 yeah, as, as a collective group of players, you now know that you're not there. And those ones that are getting injured... Stay, get yourselves fit and stay bloody fit, like you know. What I mean, that's another thing. I don't want to be rushing Odegaard back um, before the international break, for instance, in a few weeks' time, and then like in breaking down again and all yeah, that. And the cycle continues. Be, yeah, I'd rather him be like 100 percent fit, rare, raring to go, and, and and if see you know like so that when it matters at the end of the season, he's he's there and thereabouts. I think even with. Um, De Bruyne, I think they try and rush him back a little bit. Man City, great player as he is. This time around, they're not, are they? They're saying, right, now we're, we're making sure that you're... Come back when you're ready. Come back when you're ready. And I think that's what we've got to do a little bit. I, I, I felt maybe what with Tommy Asso. I, people will go, oh, I'm not too... Dis I'm, Tommy Asso, by the way, losing Tommy Asso is a massive, massive... A big, player. big L for us. We need yeah, that man. man. But I think he was rushed back. Probably, yeah, because he's played what two minutes or so against yeah. Southampton, essentially, and he's he's broken he's down again. Down again, like you know, so don't rush these players back. You know what I mean? And and people are going to turn around and say, well, why are we rushing these players back? Because we've not got a big enough squad. So that exactly that, that tells you certain things. If you've not, if you believe in your squad and all that, you know, uh, you know, if Arsenal were winning three, four, four nil every week, you wouldn't be like you'd be, you wouldn't get. Oh, we've got. Desperation to get Odegaard back into the set. I'll be very, very pleased if Odegaard's playing against Liverpool. Same, but how lot? Like you said, like uh, is he fit? How much minutes has the man got? Exactly. But it's on the other hand, well. I'll be thinking, well, it's a bit of a desperation thing, isn't it? Like you know what I mean. So you know, like, but I, I like to see him not there, and, and it, do you know what I mean? Like. And, I know it sounds silly, like we win the game and you think like, well, that's it. we've won a game, another game against one of the big boys without our best midfield player. Uh, there is that in there, like, you know, so it, 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 it listen, these next, I, 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 I honestly think this next three games determines our season. I, I agree, man. There's three massive games. We've got injuries. Obviously, with the Liverpool game, you know, you've kind of touched on it and it's just making me think that like, who the hell's playing centre-half? Where's Tommy Asu? What's going on with Saka? Is Odegaard fit? And how fit is Odegaard? If Odegaard's not playing, does he go with Ethan? Does he play that midfield three? Mm -hmm. Does he bring Jorginho and Partey in because they've got a, a Jorginho and Rice, sorry, as a partnership? Who plays off the left? Does he try something like a Gabriel Jesus? It, it, it does feel like, for me, Mikel Arteta needs to win something. And there's two things that scare me generally with what we're doing as a football club. I know I'm reading too much into the future, Lee, but I feel one thing I don't want to see is, you know, we finally got some stability. We're improving, you know, we're the best of the rest, in my opinion, after City. I don't want to see Chelsea get their ship together, Man United nah. get their ship together, and then we're kind of left in this. And equally... What I don't want to see with Mikel Arteta, I know he's a young manager and he's great and he signed a long-term deal and regardless of what me and you say, whether he wins the league or not, he probably is going to stay. But one thing I don't want to happen with Arteta, bearing in mind he's a young manager, is that he does good things here, he does bad things, he learns and then he goes off somewhere and says, you know what, I did this at Arsenal for a couple of years, it didn't work, let me do this and ultimately I go and win trophies elsewhere. Like, 
I want us to succeed here. It's a bit like during the early Emirates era where we would train players when they look a bit decent, they're off to the cities and so on and so forth. Because what people can't deny about Mikel Arteta is he's a man in high demand. If he became available or he wanted to leave Arsenal theory, there's not a single club in world football, I believe, wouldn't at least get on the phone and have a conversation. So this is why I want this league title or whatever, because I big him up so much. I have to hold you to these standards. Yeah, exactly that. And, and you, you, we've got a window of opportunity over two, three, four, five years. We've had the three now. So there's another couple of years where these players are in their prime or going into their prime. And, and none of them are in their prime yet. Let's, let's, let's get that straight. Saka's not in his prime. Saliba certainly isn't. Like You know, I mean, maybe Gabriel might be coming into it now, Ben White. But they're all still can improve and still become better and better. Um, and, and, and going with that... There's a lot of scars from us Arsenal fans. <laughs> yeah, we've got a lot. It's like a lot you know, of we're, we're like a we're, we're like, Arsenal football clubs. Like it's a we're a not good looking girlfriend, but she's got baggage. She's got baggage. You know what I mean? Like that's what Arsenal are. <laughs> right. time. I like Arsenal, that analogy. You know, Arsenal fans are. I like that as well. We've got baggage. You know what I mean? Like you know. So you know, if you if you. <laughs> Do you know what I'm saying? You've got a girlfriend, you, you know, like you, you leave her. You, she, we're insecure. Yeah, we're yeah. Insecure. very insecure. Very we're not insecure. confident in, in our... Shadow in our, of our former selves. Yeah. You know what I mean? So we've got baggage. And that is why we're like we are. You know what I mean? So we're a little bit panicky when things don't go right and whatever. But sometimes you've got to believe in, in, in yourself and have that little bit of confidence. And I do believe in this team. I do. And And... and I felt let down on Sat Sunday Saturday. Same. This is why I love speaking to you because you see it the same way I do. Like winning, losing, and drawing, that happens in football. It's the performance. When the performance yeah. isn't there, there's problems. Uh, you know, and, and listen, they don't let me down often. They don't. And that's why I I, I I'm, I'm I get angry. Even more I'm, I'm forgiven. I, I support them, I back them, I love them. You know what I mean? And 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 I love the manager as well, like you know what I mean. He he listen, I I I want I, I didn't think Arteta was going to be good enough. And there was one time that I did want him out. But there was a couple of times he could have been sacked. We can't yeah, say that, right? Like, not, he, he could know, have. Probably quite rightly. But I'll tell you something now. Um, I go every game, home and away. I don't think we're going to lose. I went up to Manchester City thinking we weren't going to lose that game. I go to Liverpool. And it, I, I think we Man United, Tottenham. And the players have given you that right to be confident. The, the players, the managers have given me that now. That's five years ago, I used to, you know what I mean, like go in there with my eyes like shut. Right off a lot of games. Forget yeah. the top games. If we played Palace and Southampton and two degree Wolves, it, automatic write-offs. Automatic. I, I remember, I remember um, two two times, get, stayed up at Liverpool and stayed at Old, Tra uh, uh, Old Trafford. Uh, a football, football hotel. You open the curtain windows and there's Old Trafford standing there. Yeah. Trafford. I opened them up thinking, oh, we're going to win or we're going to lose. Yeah, I've like, like, draw the curtains. And like, you know, uh, and then at Liverpool, I, I, I remember getting out getting out of the hotel. What do you reckon today? I said, well, if we can keep it down to three, it'll be all right. I, I said that. We was at four nil down at half time. <laughs> like I, you said, I, we've got baggage. We've been scarred, man. God, those days are gone now. When I get, I, I get up there and I, I'm like, come on, let's have it. They let me down on Saturday. Let Not us all down, man. By, by the performance. But they, they don't come down very, very often. So that's the thing now, like, you know. So I, 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 I just think that, you know, listen, we're all got the ump when we lose and everything like that. But I, I, I'm, I'm still backing us to, to win this title. I still feel that we have. Come back to me after the Chelsea game. If we've I, lost definitely, all, I definitely will get you back on the show, Lee, man. You know, you know, if we've won all those three games... We beat we're having different we conversations. Beat Chelsea, it's a man, we are now a different conversation to what we're having now. I think these next three games, listen, if we go into the international break after that Chelsea game, dance, dancing down the King's Road, we're in a very, <laughs> very, very good position. But, you know, if we're not... Hope we can. Let's see how it goes from now. I think you're back on the money, Lee. My last question for you. Gabriel Jesus, man, what do you make of him? You know, he's a forgotten man. He's earning big money. Nowhere near Havertz's spot, let alone Martinelli's on that left-hand side. As we said earlier, one of the most experienced players that could step up, not really, really near the first team. Like, you're not, you know, Sterling is starting ahead of you now. In yeah. Saturday. So that where are you at a, with him? That was a big, big thing for me. I think that, you know, you look back at Man City last season, 
away for it. Like, no, no Saka. He started. He was there, no, yeah. No Saka against Bournemouth. He doesn't start. Now, I don't know. You know what I mean? What what, the, what does that tell you? Um, I, I just... He's one of those players... We've had him before. I think he's a wonderful player, but injuries, injuries, injuries. And... It's such a shame because I I, I I thought he was so, so good when he first came to Arsenal. And no one was worried yeah. about his goals, that he wasn't squeaky. He went 10, I think it was about 10 games without a goal, but no one cared because he was creating and all that. Maybe he can do that from a wide area and be a good backup for us if in those positions there. And that's what I'm hoping. And I'm going to keep faith in him at this moment in time. But if it carries on, there's, an, there's you know, you've been ruthless with other players that have done the business for us, i.e. Ramsdale, um, etc. Et Tierney at a point, Aubameyang at a point. Tierney is a very, very good point and all that, like, you know. Um, yeah, there's this. The, the, then you're going to have to be ruthless. But I, 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 lo I love him as a player. I just hope that he can... If he gets back to some sort of form for us, he could be good, a vital squad player for us. Uh, maybe not starting, but coming into games... Giving players breaks, giving players rest, and and um, you know in cup competitions as well, like you know. So I just hope that he does. But if I'm a betting man, I don't think it's going to happen. But I'm, but I'm going to back him. I'm with you, Lee, man. It's like in, I'm not a fan. I know it's not a video game, and we can't sell everyone in the summer or January. But I do think if it persists, uncomfortable conversations around Kivio, around Tomiyasu, around Zinchenko, mm. around yeah. Gabriel Jesus, several players really. Because at the end of the day, as you said, there we need to be ruthless and we need to get to where we're going. We're not a Sunday league team. We're Arsenal Football Club. I think you know you shouldn't turn on every player down on their luck. But it does feel like we persist with it with an unhappy marriage, really and truly. So there's conversations yeah. that whether we're able to sell them is another thing. But as you said, we back them. We hope they turn it around. Lee, it's been amazing picking your brains, man. As you said, I'll get back with you after the Chelsea game. Yeah, we'll we'll have that conversation, like, yeah. Can't we definitely will, man. I can't imagine people don't know where to find you, but let people know, man. Yeah, like Lee Mark Judges on Twitter and Instagram. Obviously, like uh, Lee Judges TV as well, of course, AFTV. So uh, make sure yeah, you're subscribing, people. Yeah, no worries. Thank you very much. Minor Lee, man. So, yeah, man, I hope you're doing well and safe. Enjoy your day. People, let us know your thoughts. I'm sure you agree and disagree with a lot of what we're saying. I'm going to get Lee, I'm going to let Lee get out of it. It's always a pleasure, Unks. Appreciate that. Peace. Come on, my guy. <laughs>